Hey YouTube, it's Matthew Decker here, Leverage Wealth Management. Uh, coming at you again today with another product review. Today, we are looking at the AIG Max Accumulator 2. Here we go. In the past, I have been a fan of the AIG product line. I think that they do a lot of things really well, and we'll see if that holds true today for the Max Accumulator 2. So the first thing that I wanna key in on is gonna be the different index options that are available. And so let's get there and take a look at it. So this product has four different index options aside from the straight fixed account. Uh, and so let's just kind of go through these four options one by one. So the first two, this blend participation and this global blend, these are going to be your volatility controlled index options, which is really popular. Uh, nowadays, there was a volatility control index option on the Symmetra product review that we did last week. Uh, this one is a little bit different. They give you two different volatility controlled index options. And so those types of options typically come with no cap which you can see right there. And then your growth is either going to be enhanced or limited by the participation rate. So that is the formula for all of these different uh, volatility controlled index options. There's gonna be either an enhanced participation rate or a limiting participation rate uh, and there will typically be no cap. And so what that means is money is essentially moving back and forth between oftentimes the S&P and some kind of bond component uh, or some diversified mixed index option based on volatility. That's all that that means. So as the market gets volatile, think choppy, uh, money moves to safety and vice versa. So those are those volatility controlled index options that are very popular nowadays. These two, uh, you know, they do have a decent kind of growth rate when you when you look back on them and they do come with these enhancement values we're not going to talk too much about that just because uh, from an industry standpoint i would say all of these enhanced values are actually relatively low compared to what else is out there uh, so let's just put that to the side for now um, but the biggest thing on these two volatility controlled index options is going to be what does their track record look like we'll talk about that in a second aside from those two volatility options you know, then we just have our straight S&P option and there's a high cap option and there's a high bonus option. And so you can see the difference in those two uh, different scenarios. We've got a 10% cap in the high cap strategy with a lower bonus 0.1. And we've got a lower cap paired with a higher bonus in the high bonus strategy. Pretty self-explanatory. I told you that I'd get to this, you know, historical track record. Uh, and I just want to highlight these two volatility index options. You just need to know when it comes to index universal life insurance policies, uh, you're going to find this kind of language back casted model uh, or back tested returns. There's all kinds of different ways to say the same thing. And what they're trying to say is this index hasn't been around very long and the performance that you see is simulated performance, meaning they already knew what happened the last 10, 20 years, we all do. We all know what's already happened in the past. And so these index options were built with the benefit of hindsight. And so it just you just need to know that these aren't actual returns. They are simulated back-tested returns where the people who built these models, you know, they know what happened the last 20 years and they built an index that would have performed well the last 20 years. And so when you actually read these different, uh, the language in this contract, you can see that this index was created in August of 2014. The PIMCO index was created in October of 2017. So you can't have a 10-year track record in 2021 with index options that were created in 2014 and 2017, right? That's impossible. Well, the reason that they can do that is because they simply just 
simulate the returns prior to that. And so you just need to know that if you look at any of these products and you see the words back casted, back tested, hypothetical, it means that they were um, they are showing you simulated returns. And so, you know, when we go back to this chart of the different index options available, knowing that these first two options here uh, are essentially uh, only as uh, as new as 2014, that's the older of the two. You know, I don't have tons of faith in their you know hypothetical interest rate simply because there is no track record for these two index options going back past 2014. Because of that, I would say that these, these four options that represent this AIG product, I would consider this a limited offering from an index standpoint, uh, simply because there's not much of a track record here on these different index options. Four strategies to choose from, two of them being extremely new, the other two being solely S&P based, I would give these index options a C plus in terms of the overall product offering. Let's talk about policy loans. Uh, AIG has decent policy loans, but I do wanna highlight a couple things. Uh, and that is you do have the two types of loans. You have the standard loans and the participating loans. Uh, but you need to know that you can only switch between the two a maximum of three times throughout the life of the policy. So this is middle of the road in terms of loan flexibility uh, compared to the rest of the market. Some are worse than that. And then there are other companies that allow you to switch unlimited amounts of times. So you just need to know uh, standard and participating loans. You can only switch between the two three times throughout the life of the policy. The standard loans are gonna be the same with essentially every insurance carrier uh, that, that is doing business that's A-rated. They're gonna give you basically a fixed interest rate, uh, and then once you have this policy seasoned for a certain amount of time, this essentially turns into a wash loan. And you can see that language here when they talk about preferred loans after the 10th policy anniversary they're gonna charge you to, and they're gonna credit you to, which essentially means uh, these two numbers are gonna cancel each other out, and it's going to be a wash loan. The wash loan is the most conservative form of loan on all of these different policies, and pretty much every A-rated carrier has a wash loan. What most people will use is the participating loans, where they charge you a set amount of interest, to take your money out, but then you still earn all of the indexed interest on your entire account value, even the money that you've loaned to yourself. And so that's where you can get into positive arbitrage. You know, let's say they charge you four and a half percent for the loan, but then you earn 7% on the contract. Well, all that money that you just loaned out gets charged four and a half and credited seven, and you actually make a positive spread on the loan. So these participating loans, if you're looking for maximum income, those are going to be the ones often used. And this particular policy uh, is, you know, okay. Right now, they're using a rate of four and a half percent, but this is a variable participating loan, which if you watch this channel for very long at all, you know that I'm not a huge fan of variable participating loans. Uh, and, and that's because it's a variable that you have to account for. And it makes projecting values more difficult. So this can get as high as 8%. It's currently four and a half. It can go as high as 8%. Uh, I would rather have what's called a fixed participating loan. Uh, so when it comes to loans, you know, they do give you the wash loan after 10 years. They do let you switch back and forth three times. And then they do have this participating loan that is, uh, you know, it's capped at 8%. That's a lot of room to move on you. It tracks with the Moody's corporate bond yield. So I would say uh, from a loan standpoint, I would also give this a C plus. You know, I think it would be a B plus if they had a fixed participating loan, uh, but they do not have that. So I'd give C plus here on the loan provisions inside this contract. I do want to talk about this income for life rider uh, because this is pretty unique in this space. And what this essentially is going to do is it's going to allow you to turn your tax-free income stream into a guaranteed 
income stream. Pretty unique. There's maybe one or two other products out there that do this, uh, but I like this for people that are super conservative. So if you're used to living on fixed income, you like the idea of fixed income, you wanna take as little risk as possible. Uh, this is essentially turning this into like a Roth annuity. I mean, that's what this income for life rider uh, is essentially doing. The income coming out is tax free and it's guaranteed once you start the rider. Um, on its own, this income for life rider, I would just give an A plus because it's unique. Uh, it does what it does and it does it very well. You're not gonna get as much income if you elect this rider simply because you're not taking as much risk. And if you take less risk, you should expect less return. But for those people that are interested in being more conservative with these policies, uh, I think this Income for Life Rider is phenomenal uh, for those situations where you wanna be as risk averse as possible. So I'd give this rider, this by itself, just an A plus rating. When we look at the actual ledger of this AIG product, we've got an asset reposition strategy working here. $150,000 a year going into this product over seven years. We're taking a lump sum of roughly a million dollars and we're trying to pay it into this contract in the most efficient way possible. That's over seven years. We've got a $2.5 million death benefit. Uh, we drop the death benefit here between years seven and eight. And then we start withdrawing as much money as possible 18 years down the road. This contract is generating $152,000 a year tax-free with no market risk. We've put in, uh, as we said, just over a million dollars. And if we have, let's just say, a 30-year retirement right in here, this 152,000 cumulative withdrawals is about $4.6 million. Uh, and you've still got 1.2 left over in the form of a death benefit. Uh, so this is a phenomenal way to generate tax efficient income uh, sustainably. Uh, and if we wanted to, we could have elected that income for life rider and this 152,000, it would be less. Uh, it might be, let's call it like $100,000 or something like that. Uh, but it would essentially be guaranteed for life with no additional risk. You know, you're not taking any risk at that point. You're locking it in, essentially turning it into an annuity. And you still get to leave some death benefit left over for your beneficiaries. So overall, you know, I like what I'm seeing from this AIG product. I like what they're trying to do. They're trying to give different options uh, from an index crediting standpoint, the blended, the global, and then we've got two different S&P options. You know, I wish that these first two options just had a longer track record. I wish that they uh, had more data to back them up. And then of course, we've got this variable interest rate on our loan provisions. I wish that that wasn't so. I wish that that was a fixed interest rate. If I were giving this product a rating, uh, because they're a big company, do a lot of business, and the process is relatively smooth and they have some good riders, I'd probably give them a B minus. Um, you know, I wish they could certainly get into the A range if they simply fixed their loan provision and maybe gave us one or two different index options to choose from. But, for, but B minus for an index universal life insurance carrier uh, is, is a pretty good rating. And if you compare this to the Symmetra product, it's not a true apples to apples because we are using different accounts with different rates, but this is generating more income than the Symmetra product. And it typically does, uh, even if we do an apples to apples comparison. So the AIG Max Accumulator 2, there's definitely some things that could be better, uh, but it is by no means you know, the worst product in the marketplace. In fact, it does a pretty good job of generating income, assuming that that variable loan rate stays in check uh, and doesn't get out of control and go up to 8%. So hopefully this has been helpful. Let me know what other products you'd like for me to review in the comments. I am making a list of the different recommendations that I get from you guys. So thank you for that. I'm really appreciative of all of you that watch the videos and comment. Uh, it helps me in planning my future videos when you guys do comment. If you haven't already done so, subscribe to my channel, share this video with people who you think might need it. And until then, take care. We'll talk to you soon.